Hey friends, you are going to notice a few things are a little different this time than usual. My hair for one, but also the fact that I'm not with my usual backdrop in my usual setting. And that's because I'm in a different place. I'm not going to say too much more about that, but if the sound quality or the visual quality is not quite what you're used to from me, I'm going to apologize in advance, but I will not apologize about the information I'm about to share because it is so good that I didn't want to wait and miss this opportunity to go live with you to talk about audio. Here's the thing. Everybody is getting a shorter attention span. And while I have ADHD, as do probably about 10% of adults, I think in the future, everyone is going to struggle with attention, focus, and maintaining effort where they want to. Why? Because the world is speeding up because there are literally billions of things competing for our attention. And that is making it more and more difficult to not only sustain our attention, but to get and keep the attention of the people that we want to connect with. Specifically, whether you wanna call them your target market, your ideal clients, your audience, your followers, your tribe, your community, it's going to be more and more challenging to connect with these people and hold and sustain their attention in the future. So we can freak out about that. We can throw our hands in the air and say, I'm gonna be driven out of business or I need to come up with a new kind of business model. But the truth is all we really need to do is to pay attention to the changes that are going on around us. For example, AI is going on all around us. So we could be afraid of it. We could resist it. We could avoid it. We could talk, you know what about it, or we could educate ourselves about it and ask, is this something that I can use that will help me in my business? But specifically, I want to talk about audio today. Now, if you happen to catch this week's episode of the Driven Woman Entrepreneur Podcast, my very special guest was Lindsay Padilla, who is one of the co-founders of Hello Audio, a very unique platform for private podcasts. Now, what's a private podcast? If you don't know, let me quickly tell you. You're probably familiar with public podcasts. Those are the ones that you can find on any podcast player, whether that's Google, Apple, or any of the specialty players. You don't even have to go looking for it. And in the newer model cars, a podcast player will just automatically show up when you start messing around with your tech. But those are the podcasts that are made for mass consumption, even if you have a small audience. And the reason why is that anyone can find them. They are findable, they are searchable, and people can recommend them and refer others to listen to them. And all they have to do is open up their podcast player and there they are. They're free to the listener. They're absolutely not free to the creator. Whether you're paying with your time, your dollars or both, producing a podcast, especially one like The Driven Woman Entrepreneur, my podcast, which I have been producing weekly now for over three years. That's a big commitment. And something I've learned about myself, about my clients and many other people is that while we may want to do something, if it looks too big, too complicated, like just too much of a commitment, we might be really excited to start it, but we will have a heck of a time sustaining it. And I have a long list of projects that were started and abandoned when the shiny wore off. I didn't have a good enough reason to continue and they were overly complicated. It was just too big of a lift. So I'm not trying to convince you not to start a public podcast. That may be something in your future and it might be something you're already doing, but a private podcast is something that's totally different. Yes, it's the same in that it shows up in the same app, but it's completely different in that it is made with a very specific group of people in mind. People who are willing 
to give you their email address to get that private podcast. And this is where the magic lies fundamentally. Like I create a public podcast. It is in the top 2.5% of podcasts globally, which still blows my mind. But the majority of people who listen to the Driven Woman Entrepreneur podcast, I don't know who they are. I may know where they are because the technology can tell me most of my listeners are in the United States and Canada. I have listeners in Australia. I have listeners in Europe, specific countries, specific cities, but not specific people. So while I may invite them, and I often do, to leave me a review, to hit me up on social media, to sign up for my LinkedIn newsletter, to leave a voice message on the SpeakPipe widget on my website, I invite my public podcast listeners to engage with me and interact with me and connect with me on a deeper level than just anonymously listening, but few of them do, and that's normal. You can have a very popular podcast with a growing audience, a very engaged audience that, that waits for the day that your episodes are released and consumes them every single time, but you don't know who they are so you can't have a more personal relationship with them. It's very difficult to have someone start following your podcast, maybe even be a raving fan and eventually become a client. Now it does happen. It depends on what you're selling, depends on who you're selling to, and it depends on your business model and price point. But the private podcast bridges that gap. So people can listen to your public podcast, you can then create a private podcast. And if they want to go deeper with you, they want to have access to something that they can only have access to through the private podcast, they will happily give you their email address. Now, once you have that email address, it's up to you to nurture the relationship through email. You can also invite them through email to other opportunities like a free webinar or a paid masterclass or any number of other things. But where do these two things come together? One is <clears throat> we are competing with countless other things for people's attention. And if you are like me and you serve busy people, I work with solopreneurs primarily and some executives. These are busy people. They don't faff around. They don't waste their time. If they give you their attention, they're giving you their most precious commodity. And they take that very seriously. So I need to take it seriously, which means the private podcast needs to be very specific to what they need and what they want right now. Here's another reason why I want you to consider a private podcast, especially if you serve busy people. You can give them exactly what they want, when they want it, and they don't have to stop what they're doing to give you that attention. This is the magic of audio. And if you want to know more about the magic of audio, I highly recommend that you listen to the entire interview with Lindsay Padilla. We both have ADHD. We both love efficiency. We both love being able to consume content, information, learning, being educated, inspired, motivated, informed, entertained by listening to a private podcast while you're doing other things. I think that's the, the magic. That's the magic of not only private podcasts, but public ones too. But the private podcast means you're having a more intimate conversation with a specific group of people sharing content you've prepared just for them. It's not for everybody. It's for them. And they'll know it because they gave you their email address. They said they wanted it. So you have the opportunity to have a more personal conversation, but you also have the opportunity to interact with them and say, how do you like this private podcast? Would you like me to create another? What content would you like it to in in include? What would be the most relevant thing for you? How can I serve you in this way? 
they will tell you. Some of them will anyway. And that means you're not wasting their time, but you're also not wasting yours. There is nothing more, I won't say heartbreaking, I don't want to be overly dramatic, but it's, it's demoralizing when you go to all the trouble to create content that you think is going to be like chef's kiss for your audience. And it's like flatline. They don't listen or they listen for a short time and they bounce. That's really hard because you put in all the effort, but also because you don't know why they bounced and you don't know what to do instead. When you have that private podcast, you have opportunity to ask them because you know who they are. You know your, their name and their email address. And with a private podcast, if you host it with Hello Audio, you can actually see which of the episodes in the private podcast they listen to, how quickly they listen to them, if they binge through them, or if they, if they only listen to a little bit and then stopped, or if they listen to the whole thing, or if they listen to it more than once. So the analytics are much more robust, which is really, really, really good market research. Now, a lot of my clients have been followers, listeners, super fans of my podcast. And I love that. I love that they first hear of me through my public podcast. And then as they continue to listen, they realize I actually can help them with their business and they want to work with me. So many of them say, I want to have a podcast. I found you through your podcast. So I would love my future clients to find me through my podcast. Maybe. Podcasts are not right for everybody. Audio is not right for everybody. But if you work with busy people who like to consume content through audio because they can do it while they're walking their dog, they can do it while they're folding their laundry, they can do it while they're driving from one appointment to another, they could do it while they're unpacking their groceries, they could do it while they're giving their kid a bath, they could do it while they're walking on the treadmill. And so the fact that you don't have to interrupt their life to reach them, to teach them, to lead them, to inform them, entertain them, inspire them, that's a privilege. It's also a very special kind of relationship. Now, I never really loved my voice, to be honest. It's low, especially for a woman. And um, sometimes when people hear my voice on the phone, they think I'm a smoker because it has that quality. I'm not, by the way, I don't smoke anything. Um, so I didn't like it, but I decided that I was gonna start a podcast anyway. And I started getting compliments on my voice. What? I started having people tell me they love the quality of my voice and they love listening to my voice. Mind blown. I do find that neurodivergent people, which happen to be many of my clients and many of the people in my audience, neurodivergent people do tend to be more particular about sounds in general. So if they like your voice, they will probably prefer to learn from you through audio. Now, it's a smart idea to do video, to do audio, and to do written word, which you can do by recording something on video, releasing the video on YouTube or your website or both, releasing the audio in the form of a public or private podcast, and releasing the transcript as a blog post or newsletter. It's great to be able to do all three by doing one thing and then repurposing the others because people have different learning styles. But the kind of people I like to work with, the kind of person I am actually likes audio best because they're busy, because they don't like to sit down, because they like to learn while they're on the go. When you sit to read, you have to sit to read. It's very hard to walk on the treadmill and read. Trust me, I've tried it. 
It's also hard to do something else while watching a video. Unless it's a talking head video, kind of like this live stream, because it requires you to sit and focus on the video. You really can't combine that with something else unless you're looking away and you're looking, you look at the screen and you look away and you're looking at the screen and you look away. If that's the type of video you're creating, that could absolutely be a podcast. And that means you can reach and serve busy people better because they don't have to sit down and give you their undivided attention. Now, undivided attention is absolutely necessary for certain types of learning. So we're going to talk about some ways that you could use a private podcast, the ways that you can start to experiment with audio as a way to reach and serve busy people, if that's your intention. Um, you've probably signed up for digital courses. Trust me, your audience has too. And believe me when I tell you, no matter who they are, no matter who you are for that matter, the number of digital courses that you have purchased and the number of digital courses you have finished are worlds apart. Why? Well, sometimes we buy something impulsively and it's, it's really not for us. Sometimes we buy something because of FOMO, because the countdown timer is about to go away, because they promise it's never going to be this cheap again. You see all their testimonials, people you know have bought. You don't want to be left behind, right? So you buy and maybe you start it. I have courses I've never even opened at every price point. I used to feel a lot of shame about this. Now I understand that's the norm. That is the absolute norm. So if you're watching this or hearing it and you feel bad that you have purchased digital courses for anywhere from $27 to $2,000 and you haven't even opened them, open them, let me absolve you of this sin because it isn't one. It isn't even a reason to be ashamed or feel guilty. Yeah, maybe you wasted some money. Money can always be made. Your time, you can't get back. So if you decide to take that course, is there a way that you could just listen to it on audio? Has the creator of the course been forward thinking enough to give you videos and audio files? Or do you have a way of changing the video into the audio form? You'd be more tech savvy than me to do that. The point is this, if you have a digital course and you see that your students, your members, your clients are not finishing the course, maybe not even opening the course, I guarantee you, one of the reasons, outside of the fact that they maybe shouldn't have bought it to begin with, we're going to set that aside, because most courses require that you sit down and give them your undivided attention. And undivided attention is a priceless and shrinking commodity for all of us. So what would it be like for you to take the content from your digital course? and convert it into a private podcast. Now, maybe they still need to look at some PDFs or some brief videos to get the content, especially if you're teaching something visual. But if you can make it more accessible by putting it in audio form so that they can consume the audio on the go, you're gonna have a much greater rate of course completion and client satisfaction than if they just keep meaning to get around to taking the course that they bought, but just can't seem to find the time to give it their undivided attention. A few years ago, when digital courses were all the rage, it seemed like all the creators were in competition with each other to pack as much as they possibly could into the course. And I recall specifically on multiple occasions making buying decisions for such, such courses based on how robust they were, based on how much they included,
based on the fact that there, there was just so much there that I interpreted that as a good deal. The more that was included, the more value I thought. Now, I think very differently. I think the best courses out there are the ones that give you a streamlined, succinct, succinct from A to B solution in as little time as possible because we don't have time to consume. We need results. So we shouldn't be trying to over deliver the information if they can get the result with less information. That is respecting time, theirs and yours, as the priceless commodity that it actually is. So if you are a course creator, you can convert that course to audio, or you can offer a private podcast with your course to help it sell better. Because people who have purchased multiple courses and not finished them, or maybe not started them, will be more interested in buying your course if they can listen to it and then refer to PDFs or brief videos for the visual part. You can create a private podcast as a lead magnet. My private podcast on Hello Audio is called Show Up Like a Boss. And it is a lead magnet for people who would consider working with me, but they need to picture themselves as a client and to get a feel for what that would be like, what it would actually be like to work with me. So my private podcast is snippets of 10 different private coaching calls, just my part. So the privacy and confidentiality of my clients is not an issue. It's just my part. And then there's a PDF about what the situation was, what the specific problem was the client was asking for advice with, and how I addressed it. So you can use your private podcast as a lead magnet. You can use your private podcast simply as a way to serve people who can't afford to hire you. A lot of people have a public podcast for that. They say, I really want to help as many people as possible. I know not everybody can hire me or work with me. So my private podcast gives them access to my skills and my gifts without needing to pay me. That's a wonderful thing. I would recommend if that is your goal for your podcast, make it a private podcast because the time, energy, effort, and expense of a public podcast is much greater. And Hello Audio is ridiculously simple. <laughs> People record episodes for their private podcast on their phone with no equipment whatsoever. You don't need the schmancy headphones. You don't need the schmancy microphone. You don't need a sound booth. You don't need an editor. You could literally record episodes from your phone, upload them to Hello Audio, and you've got a private podcast. If you are wanting to experiment with adding audio marketing to your business, absolutely start with a private podcast. Absolutely. There's a reason why the phenomenon of pod fade happens to the vast majority of people who attempt a public podcast. Most of them only make it through a handful of episodes because they realize it's a big lift. Having a weekly episodic podcast, whether you are solo or have guests or a co-host, it's a lot of work. You have to really love it. You have to really be committed to it and it has to really fit with your business model and marketing strategy. A private podcast, it could be three episodes. It could be 10 episodes. It could be seasons. You could have a, a handful of episodes and then take a break for a month, three months, six months, a year. And then you could record another season and send an email to all of your subscribers and let them know, hey, check your feed. There's a bunch more juicy goodness for you there. 
So you can use it as an adjunct for your digital course. You could create an audio only course. This is something I'm actually considering doing in the near future because I like audio and busy people like me and the people I serve like audio. There are so many different creative, unique ways to add a private podcast to your business. I have seen it done. I, I am personally subscribed to probably six or eight different private podcasts, even though I follow and regularly listen to the public podcast of that same creator because they have created different content for each and I value both. The opportunities are honestly endless. And while I rarely, rarely promote, recommend, or refer to other businesses, I think I'm an affiliate for maybe two or three things and I don't even promote them. If someone asks me, I'll say, yeah, I do recommend this. This is what I use. And if you're going to sign up, here's my affiliate link. But I do recommend Hello Audio. I am an affiliate for Hello Audio. And I, without any reservation, would say, if you are thinking about a private podcast, you should absolutely use Hello Audio. The founders are great. They're very accessible. They are very committed to their clients, to their customers. And they really do bend over backwards to make an already super easy app even easier. They have monthly coaching calls, monthly classes, an active Facebook group, and you can literally reach out to them anytime with a question or a suggestion. So I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan of Hello Audio. I'm a huge fan of private podcasts. And I'm a really huge fan of the audio medium for reaching, teaching, informing, inspiring, and leading busy people. I hope this has been helpful to you. If you have any questions about anything that I've talked about, I want to first suggest that you listen to this week's episode of the Driven Woman Entrepreneur Podcast. It's episode 164 with my guest, Lindsay Padilla. And if that doesn't answer your questions, I want you to hit me up on LinkedIn at Coach Diane Wingert or leave a message on the SpeakPipe widget on my website at Diane Wingert Coaching. I answer everything personally, so you will get me, not my assistant and not a bot. I would love to invite you into the private podcast community and introduce you to Hello Audio as the company that's going to help you make it happen. So to be continued next week, and since this is June the 30th, it is the end of Pride Month. I'm a little sorry to see that come to an end, but I want to wish all my queer friends a happy end of the Pride Month for now. And we are about to have the 4th of July coming up. So we have some guests coming. We're really excited about hosting them. And I want to wish you a healthy, happy, and most of all, safe 4th of July if you're here in the States. Okay. Bye for now. I'll see you next week.